Alright, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to clear various rounds of Masked Carnival. Uh, I will be going through all of the rounds, but for starters, I want to be able to show you guys that you can clear uh, rounds 25 and 30 with just the base spells you can get from the overworld, so you don't really need a lot to get started. And uh, that'll help you get through all of the job quests up till you can get to around level 70. It'll unlock the blue mage log for you, which will give you credit for clearing dungeons as blue mage or a party of blue mages. Um, as you can see on my hotbar, I currently only have spells that you can get in the overworld. And I'm going to be using those to go through uh, rounds 25 and 30 for starters. So one of the first things that I highly recommend um, even though it's not a spell you get in the overworld, get Aetherial Mimicry. It makes everything a world of a, uh, a world easier. Um, it's not too hard to get. It's from the first boss inside of uh, Pharaoh's Serious Hard. And it basically is just free damage upgrade for you. Alright, so the first one we're going to do is round 25. Uh, Dirty Rotten Ozomagia. And this one is notoriously bad because it is basically an entry barrier for people who want to get into Blue Mage. In order to get past the level 50 job quest, you have to beat him. The first thing to note is that he basically starts off every match by making himself reflect either physical damage or magic damage. Act 1, he always reflects physical damage. So you're going to see me using basically Sonic Boom, Electrogenesis, and ja uh, Glower this entire fight. So Ice Spikes is the move that he uses. Uh, anything you see that he uses that says Apocalyptic basically means if you get hit by it, you're going to get Doom. Ram's Voice is a common attack. You see... Uh, you go out for that, you go in for Dragon's Voice, as your standard Chimera attacks. There's Apocalyptic Bolt again. Alright, Plane Cracker is going to be a uh, growing donut. So there, he used it, and then it has a larger version. Ram's Voice, we go out. And then he'll immediately do Dragon's Voice. We go in. Plains Cracker, so he's going to do a circle followed by donuts. And he followed that up with a Conal. You have plenty of time to get out of all of that, so don't... Don't worry about constantly attacking. As you can see, we're doing pretty good damage to him. Ram's voice, we're going to go out. Follows it with Dragon's voice. So we go back in. So there's Plane Cracker again. Circle, followed by Donuts. And a Cone. Oh, this time it's a lane. So he'll swap things up like that. Um... So here he's going to do it again, but we've killed him. So that's Act 1. Act 2, he will start off by making himself immune to magic attacks. Uh, if you have a spell such as um, Song of Torment from Pharaoh Serious Normal, you actually have time to apply that before he gets off his Reflect. And that dot damage will be really helpful in knocking him down. Now, because he's going to reflect magic damage, you're going to see me using drill cannons most of the time. Anytime I can get close to him, I might use triple trident because it's a good melee attack. But drill cannons is pretty nice. Um, the big thing to look out for here is he's going to throw fire angons out. Those need to die as soon as they come out. So here he goes. They also 
don't really get hurt by uh, magic attacks. Okay, so both of those are dead. So now we just go back to attacking him. Now here he's using Ram's voice, so we go out. Oh, I got hit by that. And I'm going to get hit by Dragon's voice as well, and that'll kill me. Don't be afraid to, uh, don't be afraid to, to die and lose. It happens. Um, mostly focus on just making sure that if you're trying to deal as much damage as possible, if you don't think you have time to get out of the cast, uh, to get out of his spell that he's casting, stop casting your spell. The fight can go on as long as you need it to. You have more than enough time. The bigger things you need to worry about are making sure you get hit as little as possible because your only way of really healing is White Wind, and White Wind is not the best healing spell. So here we have Plane Cracker. Alright, so I'm basically just going to get through this as fast as I can to get us back to where we were. I'm going to get hit by that. Yep. So now here I can use White Wind. And if you find that the paralysis is too bad, exuviation will get rid of any detrimental effects that have a bar under them. So exuviation is absolutely a great spell to bring into this. Uh, that is, I would tell you it's a spell that needs to be on your hotbar at all times. So we have Rami's voice, we're going out. Followed by Dragon's voice, so we go in. Now, if you find yourself in a time where you want to dodge, you can use, um, you can use Bristle to boost your next attack, but honestly, most of the time, you're probably just better off spamming the attack button. Now see, I got a little ballsy there. I stood in the apocalyptic roar, waiting for the second of the donut rings from Plains Cracker to go off. Then I moved. You absolutely have plenty of time to dodge. Uh, so here we are in Act 2 again. You basically just have to keep your eye on what he's doing and just priority focus on getting out of his attacks. So here in Act 2, again, the Blazing Engans are the most important things. They need to go away as soon as they show up. So there's that Ram's voice. That's what got me last time. Come back in for Dragon's voice. So move out for Ram's voice. Now, when he does Ram's voice, that's a great time to counter it with Triple Trident shortly after. You can see that did a huge chunk of his health right there. Now, I'm going to ignore these this time because he was so close to death. But if you're not quite getting the damage up and he throws out that second wave of Fire Engines, he'll do four. Absolutely focus on those before you focus on him. If you feel like you can get him down before he finishes getting all four, then go for it. So this is going to be the tricky fight. This one, he combines everything he's done so far. 
So the first thing you want to do is you want to find out which spell he's going to or which spell type he's going to reflect. Then you have to start focusing on dodging mechanics. There's one big mechanic um, to dodge, and that's going to be the meteor drop. We'll talk about how to bait it and get out of it when we get to that part. So here he's doing repelling spray. So then we're going to do physical attacks because he's repelling magic. So here he's doing Ram's voice, so we're going to go out. We go in for Dragon's voice. Triple Trident's not up, or I would have used that there. Apocalyptic Roar. Triple Trident is up now. Well, that's why it went. Okay, so here he's casting Charybdis. Charybdis is going to put up Tornadoes in the four corners, and then he's going to use various attacks there. What we want, however, is this. So here he's using web. So now we're gonna use loom and loom again to get out of meteor. That meteor will hit you very hard. Okay, so now he's swapped over to ice spikes, which is gonna reflect physical damage. So now we're gonna swap over to magic damage. Here's planes cracker. Okay, so I got hit by one Plains Cracker there, but as you can see, it didn't do a lot of damage to me. Here he's going to do the Plains, uh, Plains Cracker combo again. We easily dodged it. The Charybdis is gone by now, and there goes the Meteor. So now we're back to an open playing field. He's going to do Charybdis again, but uh, I'm going to show you guys a trick. Okay, so we'll get out of this meteor. So now I'm going to use Toad Oil and Bristle and... Oh, what did he put on himself? Oh, he put Repelling Spray. Never mind. So I will use Whistle and Final Sting. So Final Sting is really strong, but it also will kill you. If you use Whistle, it boosts its attack, and then on top of that, you just hit him. You have to pay attention to what he's reflecting, and as long as he dies, even if you die, you still get the clear. So don't underestimate the power of Final Sting there. Um, and that's basically round 25 with basic spells. It's not that hard. I did have a death. It happens. Um, focus more on trying to dodge mechanics than dealing damage. As you get comfortable with the fight, the damage will come easier and easier. Uh, so with all that said, let's move on to round 30. Round 30 is much easier. It's much more forgiving if you take damage, and it's much more... It's much less, um, like, massive things you have to worry about. The big thing to worry about from this is going to be in round... Th or Act 3. But, surprise, surprise, you could just ignore it all. We're looking at another time situation, and as long as you don't mind it taking a little longer... This is absolutely doable. So I'm going to go ahead and start this off with uh, Electrogenesis. It's a good attack. Okay, so he's using Magic Drain, which means I, now I'm going to focus on physical attacks on him. Here he's going to use Ankle Graze, which is going to bind you. Exuviation removes that. Then he's going to cast multiple circles. The first one comes down, the second and then the third soon follow, uh, with a fourth shortly there. Then he's going to position himself and drop a bunch of bombs. What you're going to do is you're going to look for the opening and where there's not a bomb. Prepare yourself. He knocks you into that opening if you like place yourself in the right way. 
and then he's going to do ankle graze again. Now he's going to repeat all of those attacks on loop. That's it. That's everything for this round. So now you just get in damage where you can. Here he's going to drop the bombs. This is a good chance to come up to him and use triple trident. Rubber bullets, so let's prepare ourselves to get knocked back. Here he goes with ankle graze again. Exuviation to get rid of it. Get out of hyperdrive. Two, three, four. Now he's going to drop bombs. This is a very repetitive fight, but as you can see, it's very simple. Once again, we prepare ourselves to get knocked back. Stand in the knockback. Exuviation to get rid of bind. Get out of hyperdrive. He drops two, three, four, and then jumps. Here comes Rubber Bullet. This time it's gonna be on the opposite side, but we're still good. He's reapplying Magic Drain. So basically this whole attack, or this whole phase is going to be Figuring out when you can get away with damage. I got hit by one of the hyperdrives there, and you can see it dealt next to no damage. It's not that much of a threat. Placement for the knockback. And we should have him here. Alright, that's Act 1. Like I said, fairly simple. Um, he has a few mechanics that he does, and then he does them on loop. Act 2 is going to be much of the same, if I'm not mistaken. For Act 2, he will uh, swap it up to be weak to magic attacks. So let's go ahead. We can start with Off Guard, or Bristle, for our first attack to be more powerful. Okay, so here he's going to use just a triple conal. And now he's going to start getting into some weird mechanics. For these, you kind of have to know what you're doing. So he's going to do a knockback and a big ring around him with a whole bunch of circles. You basically just have to position yourself to where you can run back into the circle. Now he's going to drop a whole bunch of fire and some ice. The thing to know is to look for where the ice is. I didn't quite get there in time. But there's a gap in the ice that you can get to that will uh, basically keep you safe so that you don't get frozen like that. Then he's going to jump around and do a bunch of conals. So, interesting thing here. We can actually hit him with Tingle, run up to him, and hit him with Triple Trident for massive damage. So now we're getting back into his rotation, which is going to be Swift Steel. Look for a space where you can get knocked back and then run back in and be safe. Follows it up with Spark Steel, which is going to drop a bunch of fire circles. And then Ice Balls. Okay, so here we're going to be in the safe zone. So that time we didn't get frozen. Again, even if you get frozen or hit by those, you can see I've taken some damage. A single white wind is enough to get you back. And we've already got him down to roughly 35%. So just keep dodging his conals as he does them, and then he'll jump back to the center and repeat the loop again. During these conals is the, the main time you're going to focus on getting uh, damage off on him. So now we're back into the center. So there's those. Oh, you pushed me out into the electrocution. But again, even with that, a single white wind is enough to recover you. So there's fire, bigger fire circles. 
there's ice. Okay, I know I'm not going to make it over there in time, so I'm going to take this. So I got hit by two there. He's going to start doing his conals at me. The ice will wear off just in time to let me get out. And a white wind to heal. So you have plenty of time to recover, even if you get hit by the ice. Don't let it get you down if you think, oh, I messed up, I'm going to get hit by the ice. That's it for me. And one more should finish him off. All right, and that's Act 2. You can see Act 2 took a little bit longer, but again, if you focus on dodging the attacks more than dealing damage, you'll have him down in no time. So Act 3 is going to be a mix of both. Um, the big thing here is he's going to pull in clones. Now, the clones have an elemental weakness that you'll see shown above their head. If you have uh, spells of those elements, great. But I believe one of the first ones is fire, and there's only like three fire spells for Blue Mage. They're not great. You do not want to use self-destruct. That's one of them. Uh, but you could use Fire Angan, you could use Flamethrower. <clears throat> I believe the newer uh, Missile Punch is a fire spell, and then there's the Primal spell uh, from Ifrit. So, let's go ahead and we're going to start this out the gate uh, with some big damage by using Tingle, because I think he's going to reflect magic, yeah. And then we'll run up on him. And we're going to use Triple Trident with Whistle. And that dealt some major damage. Oh, that was a magic attack. So here he summoned his first clone. It's weak to ice. You could use Northerlies to get rid of that. Uh, but all his clone is going to do is going to mimic the attacks we've already seen. And again, if you focus more on dodging, you can ignore the clones and... Surprise, surprise, the clones just disappear over time. So there I was bound. I'm going to use Exuviation to get rid of that. His clone is going to use uh, Spark Steel again. So there the clone disappeared. So now he's pulling up a Wind Clone. Lucky for us, we have Sonic Boom. Ooh, that's nasty. Okay, so there I just killed his clone. So we get in another uh, super good uh, triple trident there. I think I accidentally started to cast my raise spell. I must have accidentally double tapped. There's the fire one. And he's going to do the ice orbs, but it's a lot easier when you're only focusing on the ice orbs. So there we dodge those. Now we just have a bunch of cones. Let's get out of this bind. He's going to do ice orbs again. Again, we can see where we need to position ourselves. I moved in really quick on that and ended up getting hit. There goes the fire one. All right, he's going to use the bombs with rubber bullets, so we just need to place ourselves. And now that we're out of that, I feel confident enough to heal. So there goes Magic Drain again. So we're going to keep focusing on our physical attacks. I'm going to go ahead and heal up one more time, because that's the downside of White Wind. Is it... Oof, that hurt a lot. Um... 
See, and like there, I consider that like I messed up a lot right there. But surprise, surprise, it didn't really hurt too much. So we can go down to this safe spot. And I still managed to get hit. But now you can see he's basically just mimicking his act too. Uh, now that all of his clones are gone. And the best part about all of this is now that I've gotten him down to about 30% HP, uh, because he's not reflecting magic, I'm going to show you guys the other one where you use Toad Oil and then Bristle. Let's get up kind of close to him and use Self Destruct. Oh, and see, I didn't quite finish him off there. Had I gotten him down maybe another percent, that would have been a clean win. But again, that's a risky thing. If you don't think you can do it, if you don't think he's down far enough, 25% uh, should be a good one. But let's go through, through uh, let's go ahead and go through and clear this one more time. This will give you guys a chance to see the first two acts again. So again, first act, very simple. I'm actually going to start it the same way I started the third act. We're going to use... Um, Tingle, followed by Whistle, followed by Triple Trident. So here comes Tingle, followed by Whistle. Now he has Magic Drain up, so physical attacks are important. Triple Trident. And you can see that dealt 15% of his damage, of his HP pool right there. So now we're going to Exuviation to get out of the Bind. He drops a circle, followed by three more. Two, three. He jumps. He's going to drop bombs, and we're going to look to see where the bomb gap is. It's going to be over on this side. Get ready for knockback. Pushes us into the safe zone, and he starts repeating. Get out of the first circle. We'll cast a spell. Hit him with Tingle so that our Drill Cannons will deal more damage. Look for the Gap. Gap is on the same side. Get ready for Knockback. Here comes Ankle Graze. Exuviation. Once you learn the mechanics, specifically for round one, it becomes a, a joke. It's barely even a fight all right so we're going to triple stride in him again He's going to do Magitek Explosives. It's on this side. Dodge the bombs. He throws up Magic Drain, but oh, too little, too late. He is down. So now we'll go back into Act 2, and uh, you guys watching can get a feel more for some of the dodges that you're going to want to do, because again... Those exact same mechanics will come back in Act 3. So, let's go ahead and we'll start the same way. We'll do Tingle, Whistle, we'll move out of the attack and throw out a Drill Cannons. Alright, so this is going to be the bunch of circles with Knockback. You want to get right up on him for that one. This one, he's going to put a circle around him, so you want to kind of get away. Then he's going to drop a whole bunch more circles and the ice balls. You just got to find where that gap is and stand kind of in between them as close to the lightning ring as you can, and you won't get frozen. Oh, he moved out of range of me. So we can get this off, we can whistle, and then here, 
We'll, tr we'll try it in for big damage. Almost 20% damage right there. So then this is going to be the knockback with circles. So just find a spot, get knocked back, and run back into the main big circle, the big donut. Then he'll do the big, uh, the circle around him, lots of big fire splashes, and ice cubes. So we've already seen, it's going to be like right over here. No problem. We'll get off another tingle and whistle combo. Now, when you're trying to do a combo that boosts your attack, it's important to note that Tingle uh, will boost your next physical attack, but itself is a magic attack. So if he's reflecting magic, you can't use that. Additionally, uh, between Bristle and Whistle, Bristle raises the potency of any next ma uh, attack, whereas Whistle only raises the potency of the next uh, physical attack. See, I knew I was going to get hit by something there, but I also knew he had so little HP, it was just more beneficial for me to take the hit and move on to the next round. So now we're back into Act 3. And again, we're going to have to deal with this clones. Like I said, the first clone is going to be an Ice clone. If you come in with Northerlies, you can use that, but the important thing to know about Northerlies it is a cone in front of you, meaning you're going to have to get real up close and personal with the clone to be able to use it. So we'll start this one off the same way with Tingle, Whistle, he uses Magic Drain, we run up and hit him with Triple Trident. And there's his clone. His clone's going to do the knockback, I believe. Alright, so now we have Bind put on us, we get out of that. Clone's gonna do the knockback again. Now remember, we have circles that were baiting on us. So, for that part, we kind of wanted to keep moving a little bit more. But there goes the clone. Alright, I can get off another Tingle combo on him. See, we've already got him down to 50%. I'm being a bit more bold this time and attacking more frequently. I'm also ignoring this uh, wind one this time. Here we're getting ankle graze put on us. We just dodge right out of that. Now remember, this is going to be one for hyperdrive and then three more shortly after. The wind clone is gone, so no big deal there. He's putting on Magic Drain, but I got off Tingle just in time. And here comes Triple Trident. So now we've already got him down to 33% HP, and he's just now getting to his third clone. The clone is doing the Ice. I didn't get out of it in time. I took a lot of damage there. But it's okay. Like I said, you get plenty of time to recover. So I'll use White Wind twice. Exuviation to get rid of ankle, uh, ankle graze. Oh, I'm just gonna want to hug him. So again, I took a lot of damage there, but his clone should be going away. We're gonna figure out where he's going to send me with the knockback. 
and then we'll heal. And now we're back to round two mechanics by themselves. All right, I know I'm gonna take this, so I'm gonna specifically position to where I should only get hit by one of those deep freezes. He's gonna start doing conals. And we go back on the attack. Now, his uh, magic absorb has worn off, so we're gonna get in here with... Uh... You jumped away before it got off, but we'll do our triple trident here. He's almost gone. One more should do it. And there he goes. So even without doing self-destruct uh, or final sting, you very much can just dodge the attacks and get through him with no problem. Then there's round 30. I'm probably going to end up devoting an entire video to round 30 because... who oh boy. It's annoying. It's frustrating. Um, it has to do with a lot of patience, focusing on dodging, and I, for that one, you're not missing out on a whole bunch if you don't clear it right away. So I would say absolutely go after some more spells. Uh, but that's going to end this video covering specifically just Ozomagia and... Uh, Siegfried, rounds 25 and 30, with the basic overworld spells. So now I'm going to go ahead and lead into another video series where I'll be doing each of the rounds with all spells, just to kind of give you a guide of how to get through those.